Hey, Aron Rabinowitz here. Previously, I showed you how to instantly build simple procedural Greeble objects like these. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build complex looking Greeble objects, but as complicated as it looks, this is going to be really easy. So here I am in Cinema 4D with a super simple scene set up right now. It's just two dome lights to light the scene. I put an HDRI map on one of the dome lights and I just wanted to be able to have some lights so that we can see things as we change them. So next I'm going to add in a cube and we can see if I go into our display and change to any of these options that have the word lines next to it, I can see that each side only has one face. So I'm going to change the number of faces to 10 by 10 by 10 and that gives us a lot of faces to work with because we're going to need that for applying the greebles to each of these spots. So the next thing to do is to grab some greeble objects that we can bring in. So I downloaded some free greebles from ArtStation. There's this little pack that's given away for free. You can download it and then just drag it in. And that's what I'll do. So I have my greebles here. I'm going to hold down shift as I drag it in. That way it will drag into the actual project instead of starting a new one. And we can see that our greebles are all here. If I turn off the cube for a moment and I pull out, we can see we have lots of little greebles. Okay, now I'm going to turn the cube back on and I'm going to create a cloner. And I'm going to drop all of these panels into the cloner. And then I'm going to zoom back in over here. And you can see these little dots. These are actually the clones. They're much smaller than, than they looked when they came in because if we look here on their settings, we can see that the coordinates, these are scaled to 100. Usually this is set to 1. And so they were scaled up really big when they were brought in. And the cloner ignores these kinds of transformations. So what we have to do is transform them within the cloner. There are other ways to do it, but this is going to be the fastest and easiest thing. So first things first, select the cloner and change it from a grid to an object. And then let's tell the cloner that we're going to use our cube as the object. And now if we look really here, we get really tight, we can see that these objects are on the surface of the cloner object. Let me pull back and select the cloner object here, go into transform, and we're going to scale these to, let's say, 10 times 10 times 10. And also, we have to just rotate them. Uh, let's go 180 degrees. And now the greebles are sticking off. But there's only a few of them. And they're also, if you take a look right here, you can see that it's below the surface. Part of it is still below the surface. So here's what we'll do. We'll go back to transform here. And we're just going to bring this up to you know, maybe even just one, or not even, maybe 0.5. And that gets us just above the surface of the cube. And then with the cloner again selected, go to the object area. And instead of using surface as the distribution, let's change that to polygon center. And we can see that they're now arranged on the cube surface. I'm going to delete these materials. I don't want to use them and they're making it hard to see what's going on here. But yeah, now that we've got that, we can really see this. Now, of course, it becomes very obvious quickly that they're repeating in a pattern that's that makes this kind of not feel at all random. And so it looks like something that's not organic in any way. So what we want to do is go back to the cloner here. And for the clones, instead of iterate, let's choose random. And now we're getting something that looks a lot more organic. If we take a look, we can see that it's just switching off between any of these five objects at any time. And it is definitely better than it was before. But because they're all rotated the same way, we can kind of see a pattern. And we'll fix that in a few minutes. But for now, this gets us to a good place to start. I do feel like I have to tighten these up against the surface of the cloner object. So let me come back to the cloner and go into the transform settings and maybe even make this point two. And that really tightens things up. And if we want to make it even bigger so that these objects don't feel like separate squares and we don't have this kind of going on right here, we can make this, why don't we go with 11? And that will get them all together. And that's starting to feel a lot better. Maybe even go to 12. And I feel like that's pretty good. Now, I mentioned before that I wanted to get these panels to all rotate 90 degrees. And by that, I meant in increments of 90 degrees. So some will be 0, some will be 90, some will be 270, etc. But to do that, I'll need a formula effector. So with my cloner selected, I'm going to choose MoGraph, Effector, and Formula. And that's instantly going to make things get all kinds of weird. So what we have to do is this. First of all, let me just delete that, just like that. And I'm going to go into the parameters, and I'm going to make changes. So I don't want to change the position or the scale or any of that. So I'm going to set that to zero, actually just turn off position, turn off scale. And what I am going to do is turn on rotation. And I think that I want the third one right here, the B, to be rotated 90 degrees. And I'm going to go back to my effector. And this is where we're going to start putting in some 
math. And honestly, I'm not going to pretend like I have any idea how to do this off the top of my head. I watched a really awesome tutorial by Rick Barrett right here. And it's from Cineversity, and it's a really specific, like, how do I do this one thing? How do I constrain random clone rotation to 90 degree increments? And there's a lot of good uses for it, whether you're doing buildings or different kinds of blocks or cubes or anything like that. And in this case, it's going to be super helpful. So I'm going to use the formula that he shows in this tutorial. And, you know, I'll keep the code in the description so that you can copy and paste it yourself. And then you'll have it forever. So let me move this out. And then I'm going to just go... Control V or Command V if you're on a Mac, and I'm going to paste this in right here. And what this does, this code rotates these Greeble objects in 90 degree increments. So now if we pull back, that's really starting to feel a lot more random. I mean, it's not perfect. I would want to use maybe double the number of kinds of Greebles that we've got here, but with the free stuff that I grabbed, this is already doing much, much better. We're going to be creating at least another cloner here, so let me just rename this cloner to something that I'll be able to remember, and we'll call this panels, and yeah, good. Next, I want to create little lights here, so let me turn off my cloner for a moment, and I'll turn off the cube as well so we just don't see it, and I'm going to create another cube here, and we're going to make this one really small. Let's maybe set this to 3 by 3 by 3 right there. And for the sake of being able to see it while we work right now, I'm just going to bring it up and I'm going to zoom in really tight. And just to give it a little bit of a softer edge, let me go uh, into the object settings here and I'll turn the fillet on. And that's a little too much because it's so small. Let me just make this like 0.2 and yeah, maybe even 0.4. And that's looking pretty good. And then I want to create a material that glows for this one. So here's what we're going to do. Open up our material editor right here. And then to be able to create the material I want, I'm going to go to Redshift, Materials, Materials, and Incandescent. And this is probably the fastest way to create a material that glows. Let me just get in here, change the color to something like blue for now. Maybe I'll make a second one too. So let me just drag this onto the cube. And now the cube is glowing blue and maybe I'll make a second one, so control C, control V. Normally I would drag click while doing that, which would create a second one, but I want to have a separate material created as well. So now that I've done that, I've got this separate material that I can work with and I can change this one to, let's say something like a purpley, pinkish kind of thing. Yeah, like that. And now we've got these two cubes and I'm going to create another cloner. And I'm gonna stick both of these cubes into that cloner. And if we pull out, we can see that we've got a grid for this cloner. So we can go back to the cloner right here and you can see it's set to grid. Before I do anything, let's turn the cube back on and then let's turn this, uh, this panel's cloner back on and let's rename this cloner lights. Okay, then let's get this center just so I can work a little bit better here. And we're gonna change the mode for lights, the cloner right here from grid, we'll change it to object, we'll take the cube and we'll drop that into the object here. And then we're also gonna set the clones from iterate to random. Doesn't really make too big of a difference in this case, but it, you know it's good to have it that way. And then let's change it from distribution of vertex to surface. And we're not seeing anything because the count is set down to zero, so I'm gonna bring the count up quite a bit. And then I'm going to turn on a line clone, which will bring them out a little more to the surface. So then let's go back to transform here and let's pull them out just slightly on the Z axis. So we'll set that to two and that brings them out. And again, we can see if I go back to my object and I were to turn off a line clone, a bunch of them would disappear. So this brings them to the surface. I think that's looking pretty good. There's still more we can do and we will, but I want to just take a moment to give the object some materials and to just set things up a little more so we can start to really see this take shape. So I'm going to go into my asset browser and you can find that by clicking on this button right here. Yours will probably open on the side. I have mine set up to open down here and I'm going to go over to materials and in there I'm going to look for metal and I'm going to apply this metal to the different objects in the panels, right? So let me just drop this here and control it, drag it down like that. There's a lot of ways to do that, but that's looking pretty good. Let's also just add a floor. And so I'll do a plane, flat plane like this, and I'm gonna scale this up massively just so that I can't see the background. And then I'm gonna take it and move it down. We could try with the place tool, but I think in this case, I'm just gonna do it like this. 
Then I'm going to give the floor a material as well. Let me drop this right on there. Metal Burnished 002, I think it's called. And I'm going to select its tag right here and go over to Projection. And instead of UVW mapping, I'll set it to Cubic. And from there, I might set this to 2x2. Two two. Just gives me a little more texture, which may be harder to see right now in this render. Also, now that I've done that, I can see that I went with a metal that was too dark for the panels. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just grab this first one right here, drop it over here. And I'm going to hold down Alt while I drag it over the material I had put on all of them. And that will replace it. And what I think I also want to do is go over to my dome light that's got my HDRI on it. And I'm going to go over to the object settings here and I'll change the intensity to 2. And then maybe I'll go over to this other dome light right here and I'll set its intensity to 3 just to bring up some fill. And I like the way that looks. Obviously the lighting that you set up in your project is going to look different than mine. I just wanted to get this set up so that I can continue working and we can see things. Okay, now let's add some cool effects in here. So for that, I'm going to add in a Redshift camera. Let me do that. Just click on that. Then I'm going to make sure I'm in my Redshift camera by clicking on this icon right here. And I'm going to come down to where it says Lens Effects, and I'm going to turn on Bloom, which gives us a nice glow, although we're not seeing it right now. So let me lower the threshold down quite a bit. And, you know, I'm still not seeing it. These lights are not glowing. That's because they're a little too dim. So with, let's say, my blue light selected first, I'm going to set the intensity multiplier up to 10. And now we're starting to see a little bit of a glow. And I'll do the same for the incandescent red material, the pink one. And I'll set that, you know, I think that 10 is, the pink is a little bit uh, darker in color and just, just how it's made up. So if I sit, set this to an intensity of 10, we're not going to see it quite as much. So I might set this up to like 13. And now if we pull in, we're getting some nice glows there. But I do want to go back to the Redshift camera, and I do want to lower the threshold a little bit, and I really would like to raise the intensity up. That's a lot, so let me just lower that down just like that. Maybe set that to 250, and I feel like that's okay. And then I'm also going to use a streak, and I'll just set it to override, and we'll, again, we're going to lower our threshold until we start seeing these little spiky star things. And we can raise the intensity a bit too. So you can see that. That's a lot though. So let's just set that to 150. And now I'll pull back. These look like little diodes on the surface of a little box. And if we want to create the feeling of small size, well, the next thing to do is to set up depth of field. So for that, I'm going to go over to my Redshift camera and I'm going to turn on Bokeh by going into the optical section. But I do need an area of focus. So let me add in a null. And I'm going to use this as the focus null. I'll take this place tool right here, and I'm just going to drag it right on there so we can see that it drags onto the surface of this object right here. And coming back to the camera settings, we'll take this null and we'll drop it into the object for that. And if I set my aperture really low, let's set it to 0.5. Right, so what we can see is we've got this definitely feels a lot smaller now, although I don't like the placement of the null. So let me go in here and again just drag it right to here. And I feel like we can change the camera's aperture back to something like 1. And that's feeling pretty good. Now if I want to vary the lights a little bit more, so here's what I'll do. I'm going to duplicate the lights by holding down control and dragging the lights right here. And that creates another set of lights. And I'm going to select both of the cubes, and I'm going to set this to 1 by, let's say, 12 by 1. So that creates a bunch of long, thin lights. We can make it thicker if we want to, but let's keep it like this. And then we're going to go over to the settings for the cloner and make some changes. So instead of using the surface, we're going to go with the edges. And that's going to fill it up with lights on every edge of every face on the surface. And that is definitely not something I want. So first thing I'm going to do is click on scale on edge, which allows us to keep it smaller. Because if we go, uh, if it goes too big, they will come off the edges, which we don't want. And to reduce the number of clones that we've got here is a little bit of a trick. I'm going to add in a null. I'm just going to drop that null into the lights. And now it's choosing between cube one, cube two, and null. And I can just duplicate this a few times, control and drag click, until there's just a few of them in there. And so now we've created something where we've got a bunch of these little lights there. And you know, you could also use surface or any of the other methods that we did for the cloner before, but I like doing it on the edge here. 
And finally, if you want to add even a little more variation to the surface of your Greeble setup, you can add little tiny pieces of things that are really cool. There's some free sets online and there's some paid ones that are not very expensive at all. And it really just depends on what you want to do. I'm going to use this one right here and I have it imported already as another project, selected the ones I want to grab and I'm going to hit control C and come back into my main project here and I'm going to hit control V and that's a lot of stuff right there that we're not seeing and what I'll do is I will grab hold of my original cloner that I made the panels right I'll make a copy of it up here and go inside of it I'm going to remove these objects right here and I'm going to take all of these that I just dropped in and put them inside the panels and well that's that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff uh, and they're big and they're not the way I want them to look. So of course we're going to go into the settings like we did before. We're going to transform. We can transform this down to let's go one by one by one. See what that looks like. That's much smaller. So it's not quite what I want. Let's get this to maybe let's go three by three by three. And then let's just move these a little further out on the surface until we can see them. Not so far that they're off the surface. And then let's also go into the cloner settings and instead of using polygon center, let's just try surface and, you know, that'll randomly place them across the surface in different places and that'll also lower the amount of them so you can bring them back up if you want. But remember, the idea is just to create a little bit of variation and then let's just take the material that we've got right here, this metal aluminum that we're using, we'll select all of the objects and click on apply and boom, that's it. And just a last little tip to save you some overhead, go into each of your cloners and set it from instance to multi-instance. And, you know, again, just do it for every one of them. I wonder if we can select them all at the same time and do that and set it to multi-instance. And that will reduce the overhead. It's going to, you'll find that it's going to be a lot snappier, which it is, and I'm really liking that. Okay, looking good. As always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz. Thanks for watching.